Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. We are glad that you are with us today. We wish to welcome you to the daily Bible study for the Selang Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. If, on the other hand, you are joining us from someplace else in the world or someplace else in the Philippines, we are located in Bayan or city proper of Silang, Cavite, Philippines, which is approximately 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of downtown Manila. As always, we'll start with a prayer request. And Ms. Raquel, you are up first. Okay, first, thanksgiving for all the blessings that I've got and also that I finished the, the back, background check and the medical. I hope and pray that my medical will be okay and pray for my husband's physical strength. That's all, sir. Thank you. How's your husband been doing? I haven't heard about him in a few days. You always rendered overtime, sir. That's why I'm asking for his physical strength. Okay, very good. Miss Wilma. Sir, uh, still prayer for my sister-in-law. Praises and prayer for continuous healing uh, as well as um, Joseph back pain and for Archie's wife. Remind me to stay on. We'll talk about Joseph's back. Okay, sir. Okay. And how's Archie's wife doing? I haven't heard from Archie here in a few days. Uh, he's doing good, sir, but uh, taking medicines. And uh, the, next, the next laboratory exam will be April. In April? Yeah. That's, typically, that's good news when it's going to be a little while. Yes. Sir. Okay. Ms. Giselle, good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Ma'am Cora. Uh, my prayer request is always, sir, uh, enlightenment for uh, my family and knowledge and wisdom and uh, give me strength and protection for um, whatever... Maybe, sir. And uh, thanksgiving to all the blessings. Okay. You know, Giselle, if you need somebody to talk to, we've got somebody around. Yes, I know, sir. Okay. I will talk to you if ever I had, uh, I want to talk, you know, sir. Okay. Or you can talk to Miss Cora. She knows, she's, she's got a husband that's given her a headache a time or two. Oh, yes. I always talk to Mam Cora, sir. Okay. Sweetheart. Present. Hey, do you know anybody who's ever given you a headache? Nobody except Brittany. Brittany? Mm -hmm. Well, she's waiting for her dinner, too. Okay. Okay. Prayer request? Yeah. Uh, still for the people of country and people of Israel for peace <clears throat> and healing prayers for uh, Mr. Claudio Rosella, Mr. Kelly, Auntie Babs, and Odie. And oh yeah, Marge. I already mentioned. I already mentioned Mr. Kelly. Okay. All right. Ethel, good morning. Hello, sir. Good morning, Sir Ernest. Sir, good morning, Mom Cora. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> um, uh, my uh, first, I want to uh, say a pray a praise for uh for all the blessings and for the guidance and for protections. Uh, in us, despite of the struggle every day, uh, still I give praise for the Lord God for all uh, he has done to me. And my prayer request still uh, with my husband condition that uh, 
still um, he can walk uh, straight and for me also sir uh, to to be uh, get well <laughs> with my colds and, and my flu <clears throat> okay. that's us and Archie's joining, so let's give him a chance. Archie, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my prayer request is good help for my wife and knowledge and wisdom. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Join us in prayer, please. Dear Lord, we... Uh, come before you this, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever in the world we are. We uh, thank you, God, for the blessings that you've given us on a daily basis. Our attitude is always an attitude of gratitude. Uh, we wish to say thanks for the uh, blessings that you have received, that we each have received on a daily basis. We uh, pray for the physical strength of Raquel's husband, we want uh, that to be well. Uh, we want him to be continue to have the strength to fulfill the responsibilities that are given to a husband and a father. Uh, we continue to pray with praise for uh, Wilma's sister-in-law. We're gr grateful for the uh, good health that she has received. Uh, we continue to pray for Joseph and his back. We uh, pray for uh, Archie, his wife. Well, we continue to pray for enlightenment for those that are next to us. May they be exposed and witness the gospel as it is lived through our life. We pray for the peace of the people of Israel. We pray healing on Claudio, Rosella, Kelly, Marge, Odie. We want each of them to uh, be restored. Uh, we pray for the physical well-being of Ethel's husband. Uh, we hope that she, he has a full recovery and is able to carry on his life in a productive and energetic manner. Grant us each strength, Lord. Help us to be your people this day and each day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, we are going to have some interesting discussions, studies today. Open your Bibles, please, to Genesis chapter 29. Genesis chapter 29. Miss Raquel, read verse 1 for us, please. Genesis chapter 29. Wait, sir. Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the East. Okay, in Genesis chapter 29 and verse 1, where did Jacob come to? To the land of the people of the East. Right, or in some translations, I know we're using the ESV, so it'll say the land of the people of the East. Some will say the land of the East. Uh, verse 2, please. Verse 2. Miss Wilma? Verse 2, as he looked, he saw a well in the field, and behold, three flocks of sheep lying beside it. For out of that well, the flocks were watered. The stone on the well's mouth was large. Okay. So what did Jacob see in the field? Uh, three flocks of sheep lying beside it. A well. Mm -hmm. A well. Now... What was covering the well, Miss Wilma? Uh, the stone. Okay. A large stone, right? Yes. Verse 3, please, Giselle. And verse 3. And when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherd would roll the stone from the mouth of the well and the water, the ship, and put the stone back in its place over the mouth of the well. 
Okay. Does anybody know why they put a stone over the top of the well? To avoid accident. Who's unmuted? Me. Okay. Say it again, please, Miss Giselle. Why was there a stone over the mouth of the well? Um, for me, sir, to avoid accident. If Explain. Some, uh, because uh, uh, the well is, uh, you know, uh, you can be drawn if you fall. Correct. Now, we have a way of doing that in the States where we actually build a platform around it, about three and a half feet tall, so that you can't actually just fall into the well. However, I don't know that that was the way they did things at this time. So, yes, the mouth of the well was covered so that no one would fall in, because if you fall in, it's sometimes a long ways down, right? Verse four, please, sweetheart. Verse four, it said, Jacob said to them, my brothers, where do you come from? They said, we are from Haran. We are from Haran. So where are they from? Haran. Why is that important? Uh, because... Because those, those times, the people only welcome uh, the travelers coming from a, a designated place. Uh, actually, Haran mm. was the home of Jacob's mother. And we're, yeah, getting, I, and we're getting ready to meet his uncle by the name of Laban. Okay. In fact, let's talk about verse 5. Somebody read verse 5. That would be Miss Ethel. Verse 5, and he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. No, Laban, right? That's his name. His name is Laban. So they, Jacob asked them if he knew, if, did they know Laban. Laban, right? Okay. Verse 6, please. Verse 6, please, Miss Beth. Okay, sir. Uh, verse 6, he said to them, Is it well with him? They said, It is well. And see, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the ship. See, Rachel, his daughter, is coming. Is Rachel going to become significant in this story? The answer is yes. Okay, skipping down to verse 9, Genesis chapter 29, verse 9. Uh, Chris, you want to grab that, please? Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Genesis chapter 9. 29. This is 29, verse 9. Okay. It says here, while he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherd shepherdess. Very good. She was a shepherdess, and she came with what? Um, came with her father's sheep. The fa her father's sheep, right? Okay. Verse 10, please, Archie. Verse 10 says, Now, as soon as Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep, of Laban, his mother's brother, Jacob came near and rolled the stone from the whale's mouth and watered the, the flock of the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Okay. Now, by the way, uh, how many guys do we have in the room? Just three of us. You ever noticed how when the guys are interested in a girl, the first thing they want to do is show that they're energetic and hardworking and Masculine, right? Is is that correct, Archie? Archie, you're muted. Yes, sir. Okay. What, the woman that we love. What do you think, Chris? Um. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Well, I I gather that. 
Rachel has caught his eye. Uh, that's kind of what it looks like to me. And scripture doesn't tell us that, but that would appear to be the case. Uh, verse 11, verse 11. Miss Ra Raquel? Not Rachel. Uh, verse Not 11, Rachel, Jacob, huh? Yes. Verse yeah. 11, then Jacob kissed Rachel and swept aloud. Well, that seems pretty bold, but that was culturally normative at that time. Uh, this apparently was not a romantic kiss. Rather, it was a friendly or family kiss. Uh, he helped her water the sheep, and then he kissed her. Uh, Genesis chapter 29, verse 13, please, Miss Wilma. As soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Jacob told Laban all these things. Okay, so how did Laban respond when he heard that his nephew had come? Uh, he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him. And how would you how would you describe that greeting? It's the usual greeting. Okay. Uh Genesis chapter 29, verse 16. Giselle. Actually, go ahead, 16, 17, uh, Giselle. Okay. And verse 16. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah. And the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Remember I said that it seemed to me that she had caught Jacob's eyes? Uh, Leah was, how do you describe Leah? Was she the elder daughter or the younger daughter? She's the elder daughter. And by the way, um, the translation here might be better. She was tender-eyed or had delicate eyes. However, Rachel was... Describe Rachel based on Genesis chapter 29, 16 and 17. Somebody, we just read it together. Rachel, sir, is uh, beautiful in form and in appearance, sir. Okay. Ladies, is there anybody here that would like that to not be the description of you? Anybody here would like that to be their description, Miss Wilma? Of course, of course, sir. What's that? Of course, sir. Of course, right? Beautiful. Okay. Uh, twenty nine eighteen, twenty nine eighteen. Cora, verse <clears throat> verse eighteen. It says, "Jacob loved Rachel, and he said, I will serve you seven years for your youngest daughter, Rachel.'" I guess he wants a wife, and what's he gonna do? She's gonna serve for her for, hands for a week, right? No, for seven years. Okay. Seven years. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me 19 and 20. 19 and 20 to go with that, please, Miss Ethel. Um, okay. Verse 19. Nine, nine, nine. Go ahead. 18, 19 and 20, please. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee that than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jake, verse 20, And Jacob served seven years for Ra Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. Okay, now, does it appear that Jacob is in love with Rachel? Rachel. 
What do you think, Miss Ethel? Uh, yes, sir. Because he abided with Rachel for almost seven years. He, he worked is, for her for seven years before she became his wife. He served him. We, he served her for about seven years. Right. Now, late, uh, the trickster, Jacob, is about to get tricked. Verse 22 and 23, please, Miss Beth. That's why she has not his wife yet. He's just serving. He's just he's... serving, paying the price. Mm -hmm. Okay. Miss yes. Beth, 22 okay. and 23. Okay, sir. Uh, 22. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a peace. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob. And he went in, went in to her. Okay, so now, who, why did Jacob serve Laban for seven years? Because he wanted Rachel. He wanted Rachel. So he served seven years, and what did he get? Leah. Do you think he was happy? No. He's not. Are you sure? Yes, sir, because uh, she loves Rachel than Leah, sir. If you love somebody, you will set. Okay. You will serve. For so it's years. absolutely true that he probably was not happy. Uh, 29. Chapter 29, verses 25 and 26. Please, Archie. Verse, 20, verse 25 says, and, and in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Levan, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with you, Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? 26 says, Levan said, it is, not, it is not so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Okay, now, did Laban trick Jacob? Yes. Yes. How do you think he felt about it? Mud, angry. Angry. How do you think Esau felt when he found out that he'd been cheated out of his blessing? Likewise also, sir. Likewise also. So the trickster got tricked, right? Okay. Do uh, unto others. Do unto others what, what you want others to do unto you. Okay. Chris, give us 27 and 28, please. Okay. 27 and 29. Uh, complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Uh, so 20, 29. Jacob uh, 27 and 28. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter, Rachel, to be his wife. Okay, so how long did Seven Jacob years. have to wait for Rachel? Seven years. One week. I want to explain. However, he owed him, he was in debt. He owed him another seven years. Uh, and by the way, that's the next question I've got that goes with that. How long did he have to serve in order to earn Rachel? And that the answer to that was seven more years. So uh, let's go down to 2932, 2932. And that's going to be Miss Raquel. Not Rachel, Raquel. 
of 829, they even gave his female servant, Bila, to his daughter, Rachel, to be her servant. 30, so Jacob went into Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah, and served Laban for another seven years. 31, when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. 32, barren. And Leah... And Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Ruben. For he, for he said, because the Lord has looked upon my affliction, for now my husband will love me. By the way, uh, has anybody ever heard the term dysfunctional family? Yeah, have you heard the term dysfunctional family? You ever heard that, sweetheart? Yes. This is this, by the way, is going to end up becoming a real dysfunctional family. But going back to 2932, why was the first child named Reuben? Because the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Very good. And my husband will love me. Okay. Uh, the verse 33. Verse 33, Miss Wilma. Verse 33. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am hated, he has given me this son also. And she called his son Simon. Simeon, Simon. yes. Simeon. And why did she name him Simeon? Because the Lord has heard that I am hated. And you, how do you think Leah, Leah actually felt about the relationship with her sister and her husband? Do you think Leah was happy? Uh, Can you picture not. being in Leah's? Since the guys, we get an exemption from this one. Ladies, can you imagine being Leah? Mm -hmm. oh, sir. How do you think that would feel? That will feel uh, a lot of suffering, a lot of suffering, sir, and devastation. <laughs> like, a lot of sufferings and. Go ahead, Ethel. A lot of sufferings and a lot of suffering, sir, and devastation, sir. Like the situation in our generation, a lot of mistress, um, a lot of um betrayal, like that also, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, oh Miss Giselle, give us verse thirty-four. <laughs> And verse 34, again, Hi. she conceived and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will be attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, because... therefore oh. his name was called Levi. Levi, okay. Uh, she said, and why did she say his name would be Levi? Uh, because, sir, uh, uh, this time, sir, the, her husband will be attached to her because she was given a three son. Okay. And verse 35, verse 35 to go with that, please, Miss Sweetheart. Thirty-five. It says, <clears throat> and she conceived again and bore a son, and said, "This time I will praise the Lord." Therefore, she called his name Judah. Then she ceased bearing. Okay. Now, something important to point out here: What tribe is Jesus the Christ from? Tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah. 
So not only did Leah give birth to Levi, the patriarch of the priest, but she also gave birth to Judah, who is the patriarch of Jesus oh, the Christ. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say this, and uh, it's a surprise to most people. I've actually done a study and written a lesson on this, and it's been some time ago. But do you know that Leah was actually the better wife? You know, I know that Joseph goes on, but trust me, Leah was the better wife. And in this particular case, she was also the mother of the tribe that would become the priest, the Levites. And she was the mother of the son that would become the ancestor of Jesus Christ, Judah. Uh, most people tend to overlook that with that magic word love because we tend to attach romanticism to it. All right. Verse uh, chapter 30, verses 5 and 6. Chapter 30, verses 5 and 6, Miss Ethel. Chapter 30, verse 5, And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. Verse 6, And Rachel, and Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. Dan. Okay, now I have a question for you. Who gave birth to the son? What, sir? Who gave birth to the son? The son? Yes. Who gave birth to Dan? Um, Rachel, sir. Read it again. Bila. B Bilha. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Bilha gave, was the servant of Rachel, and she gave birth mm -hmm. to Dan. But in verse 6, what we see is that Rachel said Dan was her son, correct? Born to, born by a servant woman. Is this the first time we see this in the Old Testament? No. Where else did we see it? Sarah. Hagar. Okay. <laughs> Sarah and Hagar. Yes. Who else was saying that? Ethel, was that you? Sir. Was, was that you saying Sarah and Hagar? Yeah, Ethel said it too. Okay. <laughs> and Ethel. Very good, Ethel. All right. Um, verse chapter 30, verse 7 and 8. And I've forgotten whose turn it is. Who read last? Oh, sorry. Ethel, it's Beth's okay. turn. It's Beth's okay, turn. Okay. Okay. Chapter seven, sir, and eight. No, chapter okay. 30, verse seven and eight. Yes. Okay, sir. Uh, seven, uh, Rachel, servant Bilha, conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, With mighty wrestling, I have wrestled, rest, wrestled with my sister and have prevailed. So she called. Him named Neftali. Neftali. Okay. Neftali. Okay, sir. So, with great wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister. Does it seem like she has prevailed, honestly? Okay. What do you think? No. Beth, does it seem like she has prevailed? No. No. Not really. Okay, Archie. Archie, give us chapter 30, verses 10 and 11. Verse 10 says, Then they, uh, then they uh, servant Zalpha, bore, bore Jacob a son. And Leah said, God fortune has come. So she called his name God. I mean, name God. 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 Gad. Uh, okay, sorry. God. Okay. All right. So he his name actually means true or good Does fortune. Archie, Archie, move your microphone away from your mouth, please. Okay, thank you. Chris. 
Give us verse 12 and 13, please. Genesis 30. Genesis chapter 30, 12 and 13. Yes, please. It says, Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for women have called me happy. So she called his name Asher. Very good. Happy am I. Uh, other translations will say, Happy am I, for the daughters of men will call me blessed. Uh, and Asher means to be happy. Uh, chapter 30, verses 17 and 18. Miss Raquel? For 17, and God descended to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. 18, Leah said, God has given me a wages because I gave my servant to my husband. So she called his name Isaac. Issachar. Issachar. Yes, Issachar. Okay, so Issachar means higher or wages. Verse 19 and 20. 19 and 20, Miss Wilma. Verse 19. And Leah conceived again, and she bore Jacob a sixth son. And verse 20. Then Leah said, God has endowed me with a good endowment. Now my husband will honor me because I have bore him six sons. So she called his name Zebulon. Zebulon. Okay. Zebulon. So we see that Leah has been a good wife. She's had lots of sons for Jacob, right? Okay. Now, here's a different one because uh, we're going to see something just a little bit different. Very seldom does Scripture mention this. Verse 21, please, Ms. Giselle. And verse 21, afterward, she bore a daughter and called her Dina, Dina, Dina. Then God remembered Rachel, and God descended to her and opened her wombs. Okay, so now we have a child mentioned, right? What makes Dina different from the other children that have been mentioned? Yeah, girl. It's a girl. Very good. Sure, very, very Most of the time in scripture, particularly in the times of the patriarchs, the women, the girls go unmentioned, whereas in this particular case, Dinah is mentioned. Uh, verse 22 to 24, chapter 30, verse 22 to 24, sweetheart. Verse 22, it says, then God remember Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb. 23, she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away our, my reproach. And she called her, his name, Joseph, saying, may the Lord add to me another son. Okay, so Joseph is the first son of Rachel, right? The first physical son of Rachel. Is Joseph going to have an easy life? No, you can ask the kids about Joseph and they know who Joseph is. What do you think, Miss Wilma? You're muted. No. No? Mm -hmm. You know what? Let, let me just pass that around. What do you know about Joseph, Raquel? Joseph the dreamer. Joseph the dreamer. Okay, Wilma? Yes, sir. Uh, Joseph the dreamer, and then uh, uh, the brothers doesn't like him. The brothers don't like him. Okay, Giselle? Uh, uh, as, as Wilma said, uh, Joseph will uh, not like by, by his uh, brothers because he is the only son of uh, Rachel, the love of my life, of 
Um, Jacob. Jacob. Okay. Uh, Cora. Put me last, sweetheart. Okay. And Ethel, we're coming back to you. Uh, Beth. Uh, I remember, sir, uh, jo uh, uh, Joseph, sir, as his brother sell Joseph to a uh, rich, rich family, sir. Okay, sold him into slavery, right? Yes, sir. Okay, Archie. Unmute, please, Archie. Uh, he is the favorite son. That's why all of my brother are uh, jealous of him. Okay. Chris. Yes, brother. What do you know about Joseph? Uh, father of Jesus. Judah was the ancestor of Jesus. Okay. Ethel, tell us about Joseph. For me, sir, uh, he's the one that been bullied with uh, his brothers because of what he has taught to, their, to, the, to them that he is the one that having a dreams. So okay. That's why Joseph the dreamer. Joseph the dreamer. Okay. Cora. Okay, I'm going to tag along with Beth's... Uh explanation uh he was being sold to a uh, a um, pharaoh you no know, he was sold to slave traders the slave, who took him. to a slave yeah to a slave uh, people and then uh ended up to a pharaoh and then the pharaoh make him as as his uh one of his men and he became the ruler of egypt and the great famine the seven years and the seven seven years famine that brought him back back to his brothers and the father Jacob before he died. Okay. We'll get to all of that, I'm sure. And let's finish up with 35, 16 through 18. 35, 16 through 18. And Cora, go ahead and read. Uh, Chris, read that for us, please. <laughs> Thirty-five, sixteen, sixteen to eighteen. Thirty-five, eighteen to eighteen says, then they journeyed from, when they were still some distance from. Hold on, yeah, chapter thirty-five, verse sixteen. Sixteen, yes. Yeah, then they journeyed from Bethel when they were still some distance from Ephrath. Rachel went into labor and she had hard labor. And when her labor was at its hardest, the midwife said to her, Do not fear, for you have another son. As her soul was departing, for she was dying, she called his name Ben Oni. But his father called him Benjamin. Benjamin. Okay. So what do we see happened at the birth of Benjamin? The die, Rachel died? Mm -hmm. She okay. died. That's correct. And she had two sons, Joseph and Benjamin, right? Okay. Uh, we're going to talk tomorrow. Jake, you remember what happened when Jacob ran away from uh, Esau? Uh, they're going to meet again. So let me stop the broadcast.